This is the new Bamboo Lab P2S and today I'm going to be showing you how to print TPU on this printer. Alongside that, I'm also sharing with you a customized TPU profile, which is linked in the description, that should just get the best from the printer when using it with some of the third party TPUs like SaneSmart or Overture like I've got here. What I'm going to do in this one is walk you through the steps you need to take to be able to print TPU, make sure you understand the do's and don'ts because there are a few things you do need to be aware of, and then we're going to get a print going and show you the results. Before we get into this, if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting yourself a printer like the Bamboo Lab P2S, there is a link to the Bamboo Lab website in the description. This is an affiliate link. By using that, we will receive a small kickback as a result of you using our link. It is only through the support of people using our links on this channel are we able to keep making content like this. Okay, so the first thing you need to understand is about the hardware and specifically the AMS. The Bamboo AMS module, whether it be the AMS or the AMS2 Pro, is not compatible with standard TPU. Bamboo do make some specific TPU that is compatible with the AMS. They actually label it TPU for AMS, but standard TPU, whether it be Bamboo Lab's normal TPU 90, TPU 95, or TPU from third parties like this overture here, is not compatible with the AMS. And instead, you have to feed the TPU in manually. Further to that, it's important you understand that you can't just feed TPU in via the manual spool input that has been included on the P2S, whilst Bamboo have provided a second input on the filament buffer. If you want to use TPU, you actually have to bypass this and feed it either directly into the extruder via the top of the printer or feed it directly into the back of the printer itself, not through the filament buffer module. Feeding it in via the back of the printer is my personally preferred method. Doing it via the top can be a little bit challenging because you have to find somewhere to actually hold the filament. The simplest way to do this is take a spare piece of PTFE tube. You should have a length of this included with the printer. Remove the little blue locking plastic clip, press the black button in and release the existing PTFE tube and then simply place the replacement PTFE tube in and this is then ready for you to feed in your TPU filament. Now unfortunately one of the quirks on the P2S is the fact that the filament spool holder is on this side of the printer and the main input is on that side of the printer. Whilst this is ideal for putting on normal spools and feeding them into the buffer, as I've said, for TPU, that is not going to work. And as a result of this, you're going to need something else to put your TPU on to allow you to feed it into that side of the printer. I'm going to be using an AMS HT, which I'm just going to use it as a feeder module. However, you could print yourself a filament stand, a filament roller, or use one of the many other filament dryers or filament spool feeders that are available on the market. So now I've got the tube fitted, it's simply a case of feeding the TPU in, pushing it all the way through so it goes all the way down to the extruder and then we can start to set up the external spool options on the printer itself. To do this, we go down into the filament, we then select the external spool and then configure this for what it actually is. So we're going to select generic TPU as the filament option. Then we're going to select our colour. As we are using TPU, the printer will tell us several warnings about that. So for instance, it will tell you to feed it directly into the extruder at the top. And Bamboo will also make a recommendation that you do a cold pull on the printer as well. I personally have not found the need to do this, but if you do have problems, it is a process that you should try. Once that is done, we can then select load filament. At this point, it will start to heat up the hot end and try and grab the filament. I'd advise to put a little bit of pressure 
on the filament where it enters the printer until it grabs. It will then proceed to drag it through, start feeding it out the hot end. It'll ask you if you're starting to see the filament come through. Once you do, you would simply say yes, and then it will complete the filament loading process. At this point in the video, I just want to take a moment to talk about TPU and the fact that it is highly hydroscopic. What that means is that it absorbs moisture and absorbs water, and that moisture can have a dramatic effect on the quality of your prints. TPU must be dried before use, and if you find that you're getting stringing in your prints or bubbles on the surface, that is often caused by the fact that your TPU is wet. It is really important that you dry your TPU before using it and don't assume just because you've opened up a brand new packet of TPU that it is dry, even if it has moisture absorbing gel in the packet, you still need to dry it before use. And no matter how good your printer or how good your print profile is, if you are trying to print with wet TPU, you're going to get bad results. Now our printer is ready, it's time to get our file into Bamboo Studio, slice it and send it to print. For today's demo, I'm going to be using a case for the DJI Osmo Nano. We're just going to adjust the orientation of that and set it on the bed. And then I'm going to walk you through the settings. Now within Bamboo Studio, there are some pre-set up profiles and filaments already. You've got the generic TPU profile available if you want to try that, you may find that is absolutely fine. Obviously, if you're using Bamboo branded TPU, their profiles are available as well. Or if you're using a third party, you've then got the generic, which you can select. I have created, though, my own custom TPU profile called Mads TPU 95 P2S, and that's what I'm going to be using here today. This has been tuned specifically for the Overture TPU that I am using. I spent a bit of time messing with this. I've done multiple prints, and I found this is the best balance so far to give me the best print quality. Alongside this, I also have my own custom user preset as well. I've actually created two, one for tree supports and one for standard supports. Both of these profiles will be exported and they will be available for you to download and import into Bamboo Studio if you want to try them. But don't think you have to use these profiles. The Bamboo standard profiles should be good enough to get you running. These are just tweaked for my specific use case, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be perfect for you. Once that is sliced, we're then ready to send it to the printer and start the print. Okay, now just to show you the outcome of that print, this was using my customized profile. You can see overall it's very clean. There's no signs of bobbling. It's nice and smooth. Let me just get it the, under the light. The overhangs are tidy. I use traditional supports on this one. I didn't use tree supports. If you look inside, everything is nice and tight directly under where the supports were as well. The supports peeled away quite easily. I didn't film that bit, unfortunately, but they came away without too many problems at all. Still a little bit down there that I haven't removed. Also, you get a bit of support on the bottom here. You can see the interface layers look nice. There's no real issues there. If I just come in a bit closer, the you can see overall i think it's a really clean print and the p2s is as capable as any of the other bamboo printers in tpu it is a bit more of a fudge with the swapping of the filaments but you can actually make your life a little bit easier on that if you want to if you get the bamboo splitter which is available this allows you to put up to four PTFE tubes in and one out. If you mount this between the filament buffer 
and the back of the printer input, you could then have a secondary direct input ready to go all of the time where you wouldn't need to mess around with swapping the PTFE tubes. Now that is pretty much it from me on this one. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. Any questions, put them down there and I will try and answer them as well. And as I've said already, there will also be a link to that profile in the description too. Now, if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep doing this, if you want to go and get yourself a P2S, any of the Bamboo filaments, there will be an affiliate link to Bamboo Lab in the description. Bamboo are one of the only companies we actually use affiliate links from on this channel. I only use trusted vendors, Radio Master, Bamboo Lab, very few others meet my standards and as a result of that I won't use those other links. However, if you'd like to get yourself some stuff, the link is down below and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content on this channel, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It really is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please check it out. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. We would not be able to do this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Look after yourself, stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.